Joe Biden has approved the use of long range U.S. weapons targeting Russia. That is to say, Biden has approved Ukraine using U.S. missiles to strike Russian territory. Russia says this could lead to a world war. North Korea is deploying troops. South Korea has already deployed resources, but may get involved directly. And now we're learning that Sweden is sending pamphlets to its citizens, telling them to prepare for World War Three. You know, made a lot of predictions about the election. A lot of them are wrong. I made a prediction about Mike Tyson and Paul, uh, Jake Paul, and I was half right. I said, if Mike Tyson loses, everyone's gonna be pissed off. And he did lose and everybody's pissed off. But I thought for that reason, they'd have to throw the match to Mike in some way. I guess it wouldn't have been believable, whatever. So I was wrong about that. I hope and I beg and I pray that I am wrong about one other prediction I have made. And that is that the Democrats will start a war that Trump will not be able to stop to ensure that a Donald Trump presidency cannot avoid a war. Trump won already. They're talking about ending these forever wars, pulling our troops back, stopping the endless war machine. I don't know. You know, I said this um, several, several months ago, a year ago, a year and a half ago, I said Trump gets elected before he's even in office. The war is over. Now what happened? They escalated things to a degree that it doesn't even seem possible to end the war. Now, as of right now, it may be that Donald Trump can effectively negotiate terms, which would be Russia keeps a land bridge into Crimea. The war is over. U.S. pulls support for Ukraine. And that is it. And then Joe Biden does this. So the prediction I had was that they would try and escalate the war to a point where Trump couldn't even stop it through negotiations. And it will just require the obliteration of one side or the other. Vladimir Putin absolutely will use nuclear weapons. There's no question about it. OK, well, to be fair, there's a question about it, I guess. But my opinion I think he will. And it's because people don't. It's so frustrating, you guys. Please. I know you all know this. But again, sometimes people watch the videos. They don't watch them all. Nuclear weapons are not all ICBMs. Okay, they are not all intercontinental ballistic missiles. They are not all multiple independently targeted reentry vehicles. Sometimes there's tactical nuclear artillery, low yield nuclear weapons that can flatten a battlefield and create Let's just call it a no man's land. Nobody's going to cross. And if Russia feels like their their region is, is being invaded and they're going to they're facing an existential threat, they're going to flatten Ukraine. Well, here we go. I hope you're ready for war. They've, they've brought it to our doorstep. Biden approves Ukraine's use of long range U.S. weapons inside Russia, reversing policy. Why? We know the Trump administration coming in is not going to support any of this. Vladimir Putin's going to be backed into a corner where he's going to say, we accept no concessions. The Kursk region is under attack. Trump's going to say, maybe, and I hope we stop this. Russia, Ukraine pulls out. That's it. I hope. The Washington Post reports President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to use a powerful American long range weapon for limited strikes inside Russia in response to North Korea's deployment of thousands of troops to aid Moscow's war effort. This is the escalation, man. Did you think it would be overnight that every country would just say, I hereby declare? Or is it going to be two years in North Korea joins the fray? South Korea is already involved. They may send troops. What's next? The easing of restrictions on allowing Kiev to use the army tactical missile system or at uh, attackums. Is that it? To hit targets inside Russia is a significant reversal of U.S. policy and comes as some 10,000 elite North Korean troops have, have been sent to Kursk, a region of, Korea, uh, of Russia, uh, along Ukraine's northern border to help Moscow's forces retake territory gained by Ukraine. The Biden administration fears that more North Korean special forces units could follow in support of this effort. Yep, up to 100,000. The move proceeds by two months, the return to the White House of President-elect Donald Trump. Now, I remember when Donald Trump was negotiating peace with North Korea and they attacked him for it. One U.S. official said the move is in part aimed at deterring Pyongyang from sending more troops. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un must understand that the initial deployment has been a costly mistake, said the official, who, like others interviewed for this story, spoke in the condition of anonymity. Sure. 
The initial Ukrainian effort is expected to focus on and around the Kursk region, though it could expand according to the official and another person familiar with the matter. The White House and Pentagon declined to comment. Ukraine's presidential office declined to comment. Until recently, the Biden administration has steadfastly opposed to Ukraine firing, what is it, uh, at ACMS, ATACMS, into Russian territory, warning that the measure could lead to escalation by the Kremlin that was out of proportion to its battlefield benefits. Attackums, pronounced Attackums, says that's funny. It's a supersonic guided missile system that can be fitted with either cluster munitions or, munitions or conventional warheads with a maximum range of about 190 miles. Ukraine for months has sought permission to use the powerful missiles against Russian territory. The arrival of North Koreans in October in the Kursk region, where Ukraine launched surprise offensive in August, was seen by the West as a major escalation and spread an intense effort inside the Biden admin and with allies on how to respond. I'm so I am so sick of these people, every single one of them. I don't like Russia. Russia invaded. Screw Russia. I don't like them. OK, Vladimir Putin is clearly an autocrat who has manipulated his way into power for decades. And we'd be opposed to that in any country. And now what we're dealing with is Ukraine. Who cares? Invaded by Russia. Not good. I admit it. I accept that. That's bad. And Russia's bad for doing it. Sanctions are probably the answer on our part. We are looking at Ukraine invading Russia. North Korea is aiding Russia in their own territory to repel invaders. Now, by all means, Russia started the fight. Many people argue that the West was involved. That's a much more complicated issue. And I will tell you this. The use of soft power in, 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 in politics, I think, is fine because the alternative is kinetic fight, is, is kinetic conflict. We don't want that. So when the U.S. is negotiating, even in bad faith or using dirty tactics and subterfuge in Ukraine, so what? Russia does the exact same thing. Russia escalated this to a kinetic conflict because they lost the soft power battle, and that's where they go wrong. And now they're being invaded. That's where Ukraine's pushing too far. You can push to a certain degree to repel Russia and then secure your, your borders and say it's over. Instead, the U.S. is now saying fire missiles into Russia. These are U.S. weapons. We are not at war with Russia. Formally, I know I, that we are. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Russian officials say Biden decision to let Ukraine fire missiles deep into Russia could lead to war, world war. Duh, just duh. South Korea could deploy troops to Ukraine in, in uh, 2020. This is a year ago. South Korea sent breaching vehicles to Ukraine to help them. And now we've got from just last week, South Korea is exploring limited Ukraine support as Trump signals policy shift. This could be a good thing. I don't know. But here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Sweden tells citizens to prepare, pre prepare for war. Five million households get pamphlets on how to get their homes ready for nuclear Armageddon, as Biden is accused of trying to start World War III. Both Sweden and Finland dropped decades of military non-alignment uh, alignment to join the U.S.-led military alliance NATO in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The booklet, if crisis or war comes, sent by the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency, contains information about how to prepare for emergencies such as war, natural disasters, or cyber attacks. It is an updated version that Sweden has issued five times since World War II. However, underlining the seriousness of, of the potential threat, the book is twice the size of previous years. In one of them, in one of the more worrying excerpts, which harks back to the advice given by governments during the darkest days of the Cold War, it informs people of the risk of nuclear weapons. Shelter provides the best protection. After a couple of days, the radiation has decreased significantly. It advises adding the, that people will be warned of attacks over the radio and should go to basements or subways if there's no better option. Another message, which has been uh, brought forward from the middle of the booklet, and the updated version reads, if Sweden is attacked by another country, we will never give up. All information to the effect that resistance is to cease is false. Woo -hoo. Yeah, Sweden makes a lot of weapons. They are the largest weapons manufacturer per capita, I believe, in the world. Or it may just be in the Western Hemisphere. I, I think the world. And it's per capita, meaning they don't make the most, but relative to their population. Take a look at this. Duck and cover. Take shelter. Go into basements or subways. One other effective piece of advice that I've heard is if you don't have shelter or basement or either way, 
you need to put towels under the uh, under your doors to seal. What people need to understand about nu- uh, about radiation and nuclear fallout is that it's particulates. It's it's iodine one thirty one. It's cesium. Uh, is it cesium one thirty seven? Let me. Uh, I think it's cesium one thirty seven. It is cesium one thirty seven. Um, I know this because I did a documentary in Fukushima. And then there's mox plutonium. Cesium and, and mox plutonium is very heavy. And so you don't got to worry about those particulates. I think it's mox plutonium. Yeah, mox plutonium particles uh, will sink. And uh, cesium does as well. Iodine is light and floats. The reason why they give potassium iodide tablets is that your body will absorb iodine. I, uh, uh, iodine, uh, iodide, I think it's, uh, I, what is it? Uh, Iodide-131 particles, iodine-131 or iodide-131. Um, when it gets, when the particles get everywhere, you'll eat it. It will go into your thyroid where your body needs the iodine, and then the radiation will damage the thyroid, damage the, the cells and the DNA. By taking iodi- uh, potassium iodide tablets, your body maximizes the amount of iodine in your system, so it rejects any incoming iodine and doesn't put it into your thyroid. Thus, you are less likely to experience that radiation damage. People don't understand that while gamma radiation is a wave which fries your DNA and it's bad, what you're really worried about is dust particles. So when you see people wearing those radiation suits, when we went to Fukushima, we, it's donning and doffing, they call it. We donned these big white suits and masks and goggles. And it's funny because you watch it, you're like, how does that keep radiation out? It doesn't. The particles land all over it. Then when you take it off, doffing, making sure it doesn't touch anything, they ball it up and they dispose of it so all the radioactive particles stay on it and not on you. Then go take a shower. Okay, anyway, I digress. I'm interested in stuff. What I can tell you right now is it does seem likely that the Biden administration is going to escalate this war because they don't want Trump to be able to stop it. And we may be dangerously to that point where Trump comes in and says to Putin, you need to stop the fighting. And Putin says, tell me how to stop fighting when they have invaded Russia. They are trying to take our our industrial port in Crimea that we need access to. Trump would have to say the land bridge is yours. Ukraine might say we'll burn it all down. Russia might say at this point, no Russian citizen would accept a cease. They will accept nothing but surrender. Now, for right now, I don't think we're there. I do believe with everything we've seen, Trump can still negotiate a peace. I don't know about Israel. That's a whole other story. But what they're doing, I think, is reckless and irresponsible. And they're doing it as punishment, essentially, or as a contingency. But we'll see. I'll wrap it up there, my friends. Smash the like button. Share the show with everyone you know. Become a member at TimCast.com and join the movement. Next segment's coming up soon, and we'll see you all then.